proclaim the Lord. I'm glad to hear. Second Samuel 14 and 1. Let's see what's going on. It says, Now Joab, the son of Zeruiah, perceived that the king's heart was toward Absalom. And Joab said to Tokar, and fetched thence a wise woman, and said unto her, I pray thee, feign thyself to be a mourner, and put on thy mourning apparel, and anoint not thyself with oil, but be as a woman that had long time mourned for the dead. And come to the king, and speak on this manner unto him. So Joab put the words in her mouth. And when the woman of Tekoa spake to the king, she fell on her face to the ground, and did obeisance, and said, Help, O king. And the king said unto her, What ail thee? And she answered, I am indeed a widow, widow woman, and my husband is dead. And thy handmaid had two sons, and they two strove together in the field. And there was none to part them, but the one smote the other and slew him. And behold, the whole family is risen against thy handmaid. And they said, Deliver him that is smote his brother, that we may kill him. For the life of his brother whom he slew, and we will destroy the heir also. And so they shall quench my coal which is left, and shall not lead to my husband neither name nor remainder upon the earth. Now we sit back and we look at this here one. We hear this woman making a plea. But did anything stand out in your mind? Did anything that you heard? What? Anything stood out to you? What stood out to you, young man?
<laughs> See, some of y'all got buyer's remorse. Matter of fact, look, hold on, wait a minute. What I said, I said, hold what you got. Come on to 2 Corinthians chapter 7. Some of y'all got buyer's remorse. You're going to do something stupid. Then you're going to, oh, man. But you're going to work on it, you're going to write back and do it again. See, she got buyer's remorse. Maybe I shouldn't have married this nigga. It's too late now. Y'all need to consider that for the few of y'all that not married. And for the few of y'all who are married, y'all gotta sit back and understand what is it that you're gonna tolerate and put up with. And see, I'm gonna walk, I'm gonna talk to the brother y'all. I think I remember what I was talking to about this. But 2 Corinthians 7 and 7. 7 and 7. Make it go see. Nevertheless, God has come to those that have cast down comfort us by the coming of Titus, and not by his coming only, but by the consolation wherewith he was comforted in you when he told us your earnest desire, your mourning, your fervent mind towards me, so that I rejoice the more. For though I made you sorrow with a letter, I do not repent. Let me sit here tell y'all something. Sometimes I make y'all feel bad about some of the stuff I tell you, but guess what? I ain't never turned from it. And they ain't going to turn from it. Let's see why we don't turn from it, Paul. Though I did repent, for I perceive that the same epistle has made you sorrow, though it were but for a season. Now I rejoice not that you were made sorrow, but that you sorrow to repentance, for you were made sorrow after a godly manner, that you might receive damage by us and nothing. For godly sorrow worked repentance to salvation, not to be repented of, but the sorrow of the world worked death. Now he said, guess what? He said, I don't want this. Would y'all be feeling bad if I tell you something? I don't rejoice in that. What I'm going to rejoice in is that that sorrow, because you felt dumb and you felt bad about yourself, that you'll turn from your stupid and retarded behavior and do what you're supposed to do. Because then that be godly repentant. See, godly repentant when you do something and you feel so bad about turning this and this man word that you don't do nothing. Because then you say, you don't see no damage for me. You ain't offended with me. See, godly repentant word salvation, but that means you ain't going to do it again. Who showed you that example of godly repentance? That manifested that error that he made was sleeping with that woman. He showed for God because he was doing his sorrow. He didn't do that again. See, some of y'all, y'all got the sorrow of the world. Stuff the world get you down. You be feeling sad. You be all broke down. That was death. See, what you did with this man not warm up? That sorrow of the world. That way you turn around and cuss him out. Call him names. And the only reason why you do that is because you're mad with yourself because you be like, why was I so dumb? That's why I don't understand. Go back to what I said. That's why I don't understand some of y'all and the stuff that you do because you already got all the information not to do something. You go do it anyway. Then on top of that, y'all are going to make the sin you don't even got enough sin. Well, this man teach me the word. Let me ask him what I ought to do before I go do it. See, matter of fact, thank the Lord. Come on over here to, uh, First Samuel chapter 3. I'm going to show you an example of that. Let me show you an example. I'm not doing stuff after the due order and see how well it gets you. Now, it's not First Samuel chapter 3. Call me. Let me make sure that what I want. Might be Second Samuel chapter 3. I'm saying First Samuel. I know what I want. Well, you should know what score I'm looking for. Yeah, what look for what you think I'm looking for. See if we're on the same page. What's what you think I'm looking for about not going after y'all after the new war? Yeah. Uh, and, and that's a good one. That's a good one. That wasn't what I was looking for, but that is a good one. I'm trying to remember what chapter that is. What are you looking in the author of covering it up? That's what we're looking for. Remember what chapter that is. Let me see. Is it chapter 6? Second Samuel chapter six. Second Samuel chapter six. Pardon me. Second Samuel chapter six. Second Samuel chapter six and verse one. See this is what happened with y'all. Y'all do stuff. You don't do stuff after the due order. You go and you just go and do stuff. This is what happened to you. Second Samuel chapter six and verse one. He said again, David gathered together all the chosen men of Israel, thirty thousand, and David arose and went with all the people that were with him from from Bailey of Judah to bring up from this the ark of God whose name was called by the name of Yahweh that dwelt between the cherubims. And they set the ark of God upon a new cart and brought it out of the house of Abinadab that was in the and Ezra and Aho 
the sons of Ahabah, drave the new car. And they brought it out of the house of Ahabah, which was at the bed, accompanying the ark of God, and Ayo went before the ark. And David and all the house of Israel had played before. Yah, on all manner of instruments, made a full of wood, even on harps, and on psalters, and on timbers, and on cornets, and on cymbals. And when they came and made John's person for him, Uzziah put forth his hand to the ark of God and took hold of it, for the oxen shook it. And the anger of Yah was kindled against Uzziah, and God smote him there for his error, and there he died by the ark of God. And David was displeased, because Yah had made a preach upon Uzziah, Uzziah, therefore, and he called the name of the place, Perez Uzziah to this day. And David was afraid of Yah that day, and said, How shall the ark of Yah come unto me? And you know what that happened? Who are all the people supposed to be transporting that ark of the covenant even coming close to putting their hands on? Huh? The priests, the Levites. So you know what I know about? Because in the next chapter, he said they didn't seek Yah after the do well. They did how they wanted to do it. You know what I'm talking about? That's what some of y'all do. You do things, I'm going to do it how I want to do it. I ain't going to do it after the do well. Then when it blow up in your face, then you be, you be feeling sad. That's how some of y'all operate. I'm going to do it how I want to do it. See, matter of fact, look at the last chapter of the book of Judges. Look at that chapter 21. This is how people run around. This is how many run around who say they don't need no teacher and all this old type of stuff. I had to deal with the Lord. Dude wanted me to promote that debate with that dude that we got to do, which I did it regularly. But uh, Judges 21 and God verse 21. And I was about a good hour and a half of my life waiting for my turn to speak. I'm quite glad that that football game last night was a total debauchery. I would have been highly upset if it had been debated. But it was. And seeing the old, the daughters of Shiloh come out to dance and dances, they then come ye out of the vineyards and catch you every man his wife of the daughters of Shiloh and go to the land of Benjamin. Then shall be when the fathers of their brethren come unto us to complain that we will say unto them, Be favor unto them for our sakes, because we reserve not to each man his wife in the war, for you did not give unto them at this time that you should be guilty. And the children of Benjamin did so and took them wives according to the number of them that danced whom they caught, and they went and returned unto their inheritance and were the cities and dwelt in them. This is dealing with uh, Benjamin Ryan and messing with Buddha. They didn't want to turn around the men who were going after Buddha. They went to war. They swore not to give no daughter to Benjamin, and they had to come up with a way for them to get wives so a tribe wouldn't be put out of Israel. So that's why you're hearing this. And the children of Israel had departed thence at that time, every man to his tribe and to his family, and they went out from thence, every man to his heritage. And in those days there was no king in Israel, and every man did that which was right in his own eyes. That's how our people live to this day. That's how some of y'all live. Some of y'all live like there ain't no king in Israel. Y'all know it's a king in Israel. His name is Yahshua, but some of y'all don't live like that. You do what's right in your eyes. And you got to know you're stupid. Come on back to Romans 7 so we can do it. You got to know you're stupid when you're going to do what's right in your own eyes. Some of y'all can't even acknowledge you've been stupid. I know I was stupid for a long time. Some of y'all can't even acknowledge I'm stupid. Some of you just show me to acknowledge you're stupid. At least God can admit she was stupid. She tried to spit in here and dig a way, but guess what? That ain't that too. This nigga over here laughing on a lot, but there's a truth though. Just a bit, you stupid. Why you gonna do something then when it blow up in your face? You cussed or not? You know when you're supposed to cuss out? Yes, sir. Verse 3 and Romans 7. So then, if my heart is real, she be married to another man, she shall be called an adulteress. But if her husband be dead, she is free from that law, so that she is no adulteress, though she be married to another man. Wherefore, my brethren, you also become dead to the law by the body of the Messiah, that you should be married to another, even to him who was raised from the dead, that we should bring forth bring forth fruit under God. Now sit back and look what he said in that 2 Samuel 14 one more time because I know we touched a couple other things that went from. So not only in that verse 5, this woman said, Indeed, I'm a widow woman and my husband is dead. Now this woman, this man just sat back and said, Now, we could be able to be married again back to Yahshua because he died. Because why would we be able to be married to him? We just told you as long as somebody alive, your wife or your husband alive, you bound to him. Let's look at the law saying the law saying Deuteronomy 24 and 1. Let me go to Isaiah 50. Deuteronomy 24 and 1. 
This is so you're talking about the, the, the testimony of the Lord and the mercy of God. But it's also about to know for some of y'all that want to be married, better make sure you know what you're doing. Better make sure you know what you're getting yourself into. You better make sure the framework of what you're doing. Do you want to be 24 and 1? Listen to what this man said now. When a man has taken a wife and married her, then it comes to pass that she find no favor in his eyes because he has found some uncleanness in her. Then let him write her a bit of divorcement and get in her hand and send her out of his house. Let's see if y'all found some uncleanness in your wife. Let's look at Ezekiel chapter 16. And see, you know what's going to happen with some of y'all. Y'all going to mess around and God going to find some uncleanness in you and he's going to put you out of your house. Matter of fact, when we look at that, let's look at Revelation 22 and 15. Then one time. Let's just see what will get you put out of your house. And you pay good if you want. Then, matter of fact, thank the Lord. Then we look at John 8. Let's just so y'all see what will get you put out of your house. He says, For without are dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever love and make a lie. So guess what? I'll pull it out here and be a hypocrite and rebellious and, and stubborn if you want. And guess what? Israel was representative of all these things. So she was a rebellious revolter. So my people are revolted and are gone. Come on back to Ezekiel 16. We'll get to John 8 in a minute. Ezekiel 16. He said, Thou hast also taken thy fair jewels of my gold and of my silver, which I had given thee, and made to thyself the image of men, and did commit whoredom with them, and took thy bloody garments and covered them, and thou set my oil and my incense before them. My meat also, which I gave thee, thine flour and oil and honey, wherewith I fed thee, thou hast even set it before them for a sweet savor, and thus it was, said God. You see how this man provided for a wife, and look what his wife did. Took all this stuff and, and, and just got with it. But you, 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 you can sit back and look at it and say, you're right, was the original gold digger. Took all the riches of God and gave it to another. No down, no good, no good. But I was a dumb old dude. They had somebody that good that take care of them and take the stuff that they give and go give it to a no good man. Look what else he said he did, man. Huh? He said, Thou hast slain my children. Oh, I'm sorry, verse 1. Moreover, thou hast taken thy sons and thy daughters whom thou hast born unto me. And these have thou sacrificed unto them to be devoured. Is this a thou horn of a small matter? That thou slain my children and delivered them to cause them to pass through the fire for them? And in all thy abominations and thy orders, thou hast not remembered the days of thy youth when thou was naked in the bed and were polluted in thy blood. And it came to pass after all thy wickedness, woe unto thee, saith God. Thou hast built unto thee an imminent place and has made thee a high place in every street. Thou hast built thy high place at every man of the way. Thou hast made thy view to be a whore and hast opened thy feet to everyone that passed by and multiplied thy whore. You know you got to be a real slut. This man sitting there talking about you popped your feet open to everybody that passed by. Some of y'all don't live like that and some of y'all know people who live like that. Male or female. But he referring to a woman. Some of y'all don't live like that. I'm talking about this man down. This no good. This you dog. That's what he's sitting there talking about is you get used up. You know, defile yourself. Let's go look at Isaiah 50. So, so now you say, I got to put y'all out. Isaiah 50 and 1. He said, Thus said, Y'all, where is the bill of your mother's divorce man? Whom I have put away. Or which, which of my creditors is it to whom I have sold you? The old your iniquities have sold yourselves, and for your transgressions is your mother put away. So I'm going to tell y'all something real. If it be God's will, you get put out from this congregation. It's because your iniquities is what got you put out. Because it's iniquities in Israel that got her put out. That's why we here in Jacksonville, Florida, Orlando, Florida, Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, New Bern, North Carolina, Chicago, Illinois. Georgia. That's why we had to sit here and play this God for sake and play having this conversation. Because our liberty got up put out. Now something had to be done, but we sit back and look at it. 
Let's look at Mark chapter 10. Let's look at Mark chapter 10. Let's just look at Mark chapter 10. This is going to deal with everybody so you can know how God loves, loves us as a people. And for some of y'all to know now, you better make sure you know what you're doing when you decide to go get married now. Because we didn't sit there and say, Lord God is sitting there waiting for a reason. Because we just had somebody sat there. How many of y'all heard me tell this woman don't marry this man? Just by showing him. You ever heard me tell her? You ever heard me tell her? You ever heard me tell her? Nicole, Miles, Billy, y'all ever heard me tell her not to marry this man? She had been told not to do it. And when it did it anyway. So I mean, this got to come back because I know most of y'all heard, but then at the same time, some of y'all want to be married. This will make sure that y'all mind be focused on what you're doing because that is ridiculous. And y'all got to sit back and realize something and see how the Lord works. Because I know some of y'all reason why y'all going to do stuff that we're going to get an itching in your pants. But some of y'all just a little too old to be around here feeling like this. Mark chapter 10, verse 1. And he rose from this and coming to the coast of Judea by the far side of Jordan. And the people resort unto him again as he was wont. And he taught them again. And the Pharisees came to him and asked him, Is it lawful for a man to put away his wife, tempting him? And he answered and said unto them, What did Moses command you? And they said, Moses suffered to write a bill of divorcement in the pillar of what? Now what was your way to do on right? Let's see what the Lord told. And they said, Moses, uh, and Yahshua answered and said unto them, For the heart of your heart, he wrote you this precept. From the beginning of the creation of God, made them male and female. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife, and they shall twain shall be one flesh. And then they, so they are no more twain, but one flesh. What therefore God has joined together, let no man put asunder. Now we sit back and look at it. Y'all joined us to, to himself. Now let's look at the beginning of it. Look, let's, look, let's look at Malachi chapter 2. Let's just look at Malachi chapter 2. Let's just look at Malachi chapter 2. See if we can tie this in back to Israel and y'all sure. And then we'll just go from there. Malachi chapter 2 by verse 14. Mm, thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. Look at what he said. Yet you say, wherefore, because Yah has been witness between thee and the wife of thy youth, against whom thou hast dealt treacherously, yet she is thy companion and the wife of thy covenant. Listen to what he said. Because he said he made a warning law. I didn't know what the Lord just said. Did he not, did, and did not he make warning? Yet he had the residue of the Spirit, and wherefore warning? that he might seek a godly seed. Therefore, take heed to your spirit, and let none deal treacherously against the wife of his youth. For Yah the God of Israel said that he hate putting away. One cover violence with his garment, saith Yah. Therefore, take heed to your spirit, that you deal not treacherously. And that's what some of y'all need to realize. You need to take heed. Some of y'all don't deal treacherously with your wife. Some of y'all deal treacherously with God and the stuff that you do. He said, take heed to your spirit. But keep thinking, look, we'll deal with that more in, in, in definitely in the moment. But this man said, did he not make one? And the God is see, Now, y'all saw this mention something from the beginning. It's not here in Malachi. It's not Malachi referring back to the beginning, too. Let's go look at the beginning. Genesis chapter 2. Because this man says, when God brought together, let no man split a supper. Then we look at Hosea chapter 2. Matter of fact, we got to look at John chapter 8 before we even get there. There's a lot of stuff coming to the man. That's when I just know, uh, I know Dwight going to say it time to up, but that's what I, but I can't do it. They say, I won't see it coming out. I know he can going to stand out there and probably pay a thousand dollars for a phone. But this one I wish I had a speakerphone on so we could put this nigga here to work. We pay him about 25 cents a minute. And we only gonna work for three and a half minutes. So what that equal up to the buffer? Count fast. How many that equal up to? Mm -hmm. It's about 75 cents in. I can't count but 30 seconds what that be. One thirty seven one? About a dollar and two cents. Mm -hmm. About a dollar and two cents. This is a chapter two and about verse one. Yeah, I said we're going to John 8 after this. I got to test that because I called for it already. But Genesis chapter 2, verse 21. 
And y'all called the deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept, and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh and stared thereof. And the rib which I had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones, and flesh is my flesh. She shall be called woman, because she was taken out of man. What did we just do with not too long ago about flesh and bone? Who have been holding that with bones not too long ago about flesh and bone? Do you remember what we did here not too long ago about flesh and bone? Huh? Who, who remember what we did there with not too long ago about flesh and bone? This is important. Huh? What are you talking about? What did he say? What did he say? He said, Lord, let the bones of the Lord. I don't know. Listen to Luke chapter 24. This is important. This man says, Well, God brought together. He says, Well, God brought together. Let no man split asunder. Let me look at Luke chapter 24, man. Because he said, You have not born of my bone, flesh of my flesh. When Israel came to David and the first Bible, they said, We are your bone and your flesh. Let's see what happened. Luke 24, verse 36. This is why it's important. They say, well, God brought together that no man split a son. And as they just spake, God said of himself through the midst of them and said, Unto them, peace be unto you. But they were terrified and affrighted, supposed that they had seen a spirit. And he said unto them, Why are you troubled? Why do thoughts arise in your heart? Behold, my hands and my feet, that it is I myself under me, and see, for a spirit hath not flesh and bones as you see me have. And he began, What did he say he made them? Male and female, right? Look at Genesis chapter 5 and verse 1. So that means when he told them to be on flesh and bone, they were like, you behold a male and female, you behold them, they're hugging and they're right. I better take my wife again. Because he said, if your husband would be dead, you could be married to another. Paul told you that the Messiah is dead, he's dead, and that Lord, he might bring forth fool on the God. That took us right back to what we dealt with in 2 Kings not too long ago, that he take root down and bring forth fool up. I didn't want you to read Genesis chapter 5 verse 1. Let me get there if I can get there in, in, a, in a fishing map. Genesis 5 verse 1. This is the book of the generations of Adam. In the day that God created man, in the likeness of God made he him. Male and female created he them and blessed them and called their name Adam in the day when they were created. Now when we sit back and we say you supposed to baptize people in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Ruach, and the Holy Spirit, but all that's tied up in the Yahshua, because Paul told you the whole family in heaven and earth is named after his name. Did that man tell you those that named themselves after the Messiah and let them depart from the victory? So when this man came back and said, Behold, we are flesh and bone, ain't he referring to his wife too? Because ain't he wrong? Fifth Corinthians chapter 6. We might get to John A with the Lord, but we might not. I don't think we're going to get there. It's not even really relevant at this time. First, first, first Corinthians chapter 6, about verse 12. No, I'm going to work well. Make it verse 13. Meats for the belly and belly for the meat. But God shall destroy both it and them. Now the body is not for fornication, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. That's what y'all got to remember. Now most of y'all don't got that problem. Because there ain't a, but a handful of y'all that are not married. But you know, nobody ain't made for you to be around here getting freaky. Yeah, and unless you're married, you get freaky as you want. You don't come out, you got no problem with it. You don't touch, make sure your wife ain't on a cycle. You married, you get freaky all you want. That means if you ain't married, you ain't got no bit. Matter of fact, hold this up. First Thessalonians 4, 4, 4 and 1. For the married people, this ain't relevant on y'all here. First Thessalonians 4 and 1. But for those who not, it is relevant. First Thessalonians 4 and 1. Furthermore, then we beseech you, brethren, and exhort you by the Lord of our Spirit, that as you have received of us, how you ought to walk and to please God, so you will abide more and more. For ye know what commandments we gave you by the Lord Yahshua. For this is the will of God, even your sanctification, that you should abstain from fornication. That every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and in honor, not in the lust of conspicuous, even as the Gentiles which know not God. 
that no man go beyond the father's brother in any matter, because that the Lord is an avenger of all such, as we have also have forewarned you and testified. For God hath not called us unto uncleanness, but unto cobrest. So you know what I'm talking about? You ain't married, you ain't got no business lying here sitting around here loving the father yourself. You ain't got no business fornicating, you ain't got no business masturbating, you ain't got no business doing any of those things. You need to learn how to possess your body in a set apart fashion and honor and respect yourself. Come on back around here to first school and finish chapter six. Y'all got to learn how to do that now. That man done bought that. Your own your tail, that man bought it. Walk around here and act like it. Live like it. And that don't just deal with just, just like you said, he ain't calling to uncleanness, but covet. That means, guess what, man? Wash your clothes. Wash your butt. Clean your mouth. You know what I'm talking about? Life for real, man. That's what that shit, man. It, it, it's, it's a job just to say, hey, you know what? I've been sweating for. Like I said, you know, it's that time of year. You know, we all know about it. Well, all of us is all know. This time of year, if you go outside a lot, you don't want to bathe about two, three times a day. Like this time of year, going to bed, if we go to bed in the wintertime, they ain't never hot enough. You got to put brush most wet. Why are you going there every time of year? Man, it's hot. I don't want to go to AC, break it, I don't want to go there. I don't want to go there every day. I'm sweating like a hole in there. Then on November, December, you couldn't get a sweat to come out. And you're doing the same type of stuff. Yeah, I seen you was on the step back and I seen you too. Step back. I should buy the diet. It's hard. It's so hard here. Yeah, it's hot enough. It be hot enough. It gets like that this time of year. And you're going to want to get that stuff up off it. I'm talking about, hey, man, wash your body, man. Mm -hmm. Especially, I'm talking about even for men, you need to wash your body. But for women, even more, y'all are open to Can you walk around here, man? Man, the worst thing a man ever want to walk over the woman who's thinking, fuck. Mm -hmm. Just for the thing, chapter 6, by verse 14. Keep that in mind, man. Take some pride and have some respect and honor about yourself. You say you want to be a Jew, man. Man, nobody should be walking up on you and your blood smell like death. Your clothes stink, your busted, your general stink. You know what I'm talking about? It's all dirty, cold, dirty. Man, what is cold? Man, I'm cold. Man, I know it's, it's 24 hours around you, man. Somewhere around you. Shoot, I know somebody got a lot of water and dry the water. I mean, man, I'm going for a couple dollars. They're glad they probably let you come over there and eat. Don't do your time like that, man. So God has raised up both, both raised up the Lord and will also raise up us, us by his own power. May we not that your bodies are the members of the Messiah. Shall I then take the members of the Messiah and make them the members of the Lord? God forbid. What? May ye not that he which is joined to a heart is one body for two, so that he shall be one flesh. But he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. Now, you know this man that died so he can be able to bring forth fruit, that we can be able to be joined back to him. That's why this man said clearly, you don't see a spirit having flesh and bone like I have, but this man will take you right back to Adam and saying, I done bought back my life. Hosea chapter 2. Then I'll show you Ezekiel 44. Once that tied back to the law, why you had to buy back the wife? Chapter 2. Because the man said he made a one. He said, Well, God, God brought the devil let no man split asunder. God divorced us and put us out, but he married another people. He didn't give him another wife. That's why these people be tripping me out talking about Israel no more. He married the Gentile. But that means God went went against his own word. The man said, Well, God brought the devil let no man split asunder. Why would he divorce his wife and go marry her mother and tell me you can't do it? Wouldn't he do the same thing he told you not to do? That man said he hate putting away. So you know it's got to be something he's going to come through the weapon side and bring his wife back. Hosea chapter 2, verse 14. He said, Therefore, behold, I will allure her and will bring her into the wilderness and speak comfortably unto her. And I will give her vineyards and thence the valley of Achar for a door of hope. And she shall sing there as in the days of her youth, as in the day when she came up out of the land of Egypt. So now guess what? If she came up out of the land of Egypt, this time now when we were brought out of sin. Remember y'all sure said, if the sun shall make you free, you shall be free indeed, right? When we were brought up out of Egypt, we were in captivity. We were not free. 
be created free and from that. He said, my wife don't sin as the day when she was born out of Egypt. It's the same thing when he came about her, when he came about the world, did not the disciples sin? Did they not rejoice? Did they not have it? Just like in the days of you. Just like in the days of you. I'm going to redeem this people. They shall be in that day, said God, and thou shalt call me Ishi, which means husband. And thou shalt call me no more Bella. For I will take the name of Balaam's out of her mouth, and they shall no more be remembered by, by their name. And in that day I will make a covenant for them with the beasts of the field, and with the fowl of heaven, with the creeping things of the ground. I will break the bow and the sword and the battle out of the earth, and I will make them to lie down safely. And I will betroth thee, thee unto me forever. I will betroth thee unto me in righteousness and in judgment and in loving kindness and in mercies. And I will betroth thee unto me in faithfulness, and thou shalt know God. Let's look at 2 Corinthians chapter 11. Could not a man say, I will espouse you unto me? And look what he said now, the key things he mentioned. Righteousness, judgment, loving kindness, and mercies, and faithfulness. See, but some of y'all can't sit back and look at that because you've been dealing with treasures. 2 Corinthians chapter 11. Verse 1. Some of y'all ain't going to be able to do that because you've been dealing with treasures. 2 Corinthians chapter 11. He said, Would to God you could bear with me a little, and verse 1. Would to God you could bear with me a little than my father. Indeed, bear with me. For I am jealous over you with a godly jealousy. For I have espoused you to one husband, that I might present you as a chaste virgin to the Messiah. But I fear that by any means as a servant beguiled Eve through his subtility, so your mind should be corrected from the simplicity that is in the Messiah. That will happen with that. See, we fear by any means that you be corrupted by your simple in the world to see that's what you know somebody suffers, that means they will slip. See, you let that old slip talk and make it get you. Yeah, hey, yeah, you better watch out for that too and get you, because all you've been doing is you got to go on off for that slip talk and make it get you to. You've been a spouse to be a chaste virgin unto the Messiah. Man, man came back. The redeemed his wife and made his wife one. That's why y'all still came back and talked to him. If a man divorced his wife and married another, he committed adultery. Y'all did not divorce his wife and marry another people. If God telling you not to do it, he hold him to the same step as he not. Did he divorce his people and marry somebody else? So if you turn around and tell me that, is that not just? See, that's righteousness right there. See, some of y'all, y'all can't serve God in righteousness because you don't know what's right. Let me, back to, uh, let me show you Ezekiel 44 when we can get to the root of what you mentioned, what we looked at in 2 Samuel. We've got to get all that because we want to say, I am a widow, my husband is dead. The only way we can become this man's wife again is this man had to die. Y'all got a lot of sitting there last night having a deal with this dude talking about uh, what I had to mention about what we got to do. This stupid nigga sitting here talking about this having a debate, talking about did the Lord die on the cross and is he God? Don't you know this man didn't die here in vain? Don't you know if you say this man died, don't you know he didn't die, he died on God? Because God said he died. And he was going to do Don't you know if this man did not die, that we are still cast off as a people and we can never be redeemed? Don't you know he's still in our sins? Don't you know we all going to hell? You know what that means, Christ? Then he got mad at the day. You know what I told him nigga last night? I told him that I said, don't damn one of you niggas try to call me, inbox me, get on my page, asking me to do a debate, because I will not do it. I let that be know. I said, I'm doing this here because they asked me to do it. But if you call me tonight, I'm going to debate you, brother. I'm going to tell you, debate the uh, little, little monkey dog you got in the room. But, you know what I'm saying? Look in the mirror and talk to yourself. Because I'm not going to do it. I can't do it. You know what I'm talking about? I was shocked. I, I, I just got to tell y'all this, but y'all, what do you think I told this nigga when that nigga asked me what I was doing to prepare for the debate? What do you think I told him? Watching the game? Huh? You the button for watching the game? No, I wasn't. I didn't want to bother her while she was watching. Yeah, I ain't missed nothing because they were stupid. Got my heart. That was ridiculous. But uh, I told that nigga, man, I'm not going to. I said, man, I ain't studying. I ain't doing nothing. I said, man, we got a congregation of people, man. We got souls to look after, man. You think I'm going to waste precious time researching and studying about can a woman preach? I'm going to sit back and look at that. I'm going to go to I'm going to all of us in here go to that room. And you think that I'm going to develop, let me see, let me get off in the pool. And let me see what I'm going to get in with. 
Man, I said, man, I ain't even studying none of that. I said, to be told, I ain't going to look at nothing till the day of. The man going to give me a word and we're going to preach it. I don't care what that man got to say. I'm not studying what he got to say. It really don't mean nothing to me what he got to say. We're going to preach this word. And if you don't want to hear it, you can go to hell. Like I told you. If I say a woman can't preach what? If I say a woman can't preach and God says she can't, what about this done? So if I lie on God, what should happen to me? I should go there. But if a woman can't, can't preach, and you teach her that she can, and she goes through it, then what should happen to him? He should go to hell. Well, I basically told you, man, it's time to stop being simps. It's time to talk about like you niggas got vaginas and you bleed once a month. And it's your time to stand up, look that woman in the face, tell her to sit out, and shut your mouth. You know what I'm talking about? This is not your place. I will not come in your job and tell you how to unload me trucks and drive the truck. I know what I'm doing. I won't come in your job and tell you that. I know you probably got people in your job. I probably know what they're doing, but they don't know what they're doing. And every woman that tries to preach and teach the word, she acts like she knows what she's doing. She thinks she knows what she's doing. Nigga, you don't know what she's doing. You know what I'm talking about? Sit down somewhere. He's been tripping. Nigga told me to my, he's talking. Nigga had the nerve, the audacity. To tag me and son talking about I'm talking crazy. I'm talking about only oh, woman can't preach. Jesus sucked on his mama too. I I didn't even say nothing but praise y'all for y'all so I can show you how dumb a nigga is. What does a woman breastfeeding got to do with teaching the word? That can show you how stupid people live. Oh man. He breastfed. So what, nigga? So good cause of our uh, baby left on the woman did that you were born to teach word? And you said that as a grown man with full confidence. I'm talking about you put this on a social media site with full faith and you rocking me. Anybody with a clear level of evidence that this nigga got to be extremely stupid to equate breastfeeding with teaching. And another thing you say, you really said that? That's weak.com. So guess what you know that tell me? Self number one, self number two. I didn't even do it before. I told you about it. When I was in that RLS salon, trying to teach that, teaching these people the word, and I got this nigga sitting next to me, I just told you something. You don't even know what you're talking about. You call yourself trying to assist me. I don't even mean with it, too. Because you know I can get loose with it, can't I? I didn't get loose with it. I just put my hand on the woman's shoulder. If I put my hand on her, she already knew what it meant to be quiet. This nigga got hot. Don't do that. I don't like it. I feel it. I feel it. So, man, sit down and shut your mouth and abuse you from all the people. I was trying to be nice. You know what I'm talking about? I was trying to be nice. I couldn't just get up and say, woman, shut your mouth on me, door. You know what I'm talking about? Stay up. As a man, if I need a woman's assistant to preach the word, I ain't even fit for the job. Need no woman to help me teach no word. That's insane. But guess what? When you believe me once a month, you see, you see, that number one we make. That's why our people are in disarray. That's why people ain't got no problem divorcing people. That's why they don't talk about, even now they know the, the, the dynamics of what them two people got going on. But that's why they have to be the reason that they want to say she's spinning this man's face. The reason why they you obviously didn't respect her. There's no way in the world a woman would spin a man's face whom she respects. That doesn't even make any sense. You will not spit on someone you respect. That's why our kids out here running the street, killing each other, and our women dressed like hell, want to be like Nicki Minaj and all these old other people, because we don't respect ourselves. So there's no way in the world to be respect your own. That's why these niggas scared to tell these women to stay in their place. That's why they're scared. Because you don't want to seem to be sexist. Man, I don't care. Maybe she'll get over it. You want to talk about she'll grit her teeth and she'll stub her feet, and she's going to sit up and down, and she's going to make that woman, she's going to go to hell. It's simple as that. Because if it's right, it's right, it's wrong, it's wrong. If it's right for a woman to preach the word, I say do what you do. If it's right for you to get divorced and marry you or another person, I say do what you do. But if it ain't, you have to go to hell. And I'll tell you that to your face. We're going to show you. But never mind. This is easy here for you, man. I got to tell you, I got to tell you, bro. I say, man, look at me. I ain't doing nothing to get ready. I'm talking about, if I told you I was studying the baby nigga about to the woman preach the word, what would you think about me, bro? If I sat there and told you, I'm standing up for this nigga right now. What would you do? I would think, nigga, that ain't you. 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 
know, you know, ever since, ever since you said what my brother was saying, I wouldn't even look for that. I wouldn't even look for that. I wouldn't even look for that. what you think about me if I told you I was standing to get ready to debate one of these niggas? Did you the answer to what would you think? about me if I told you I was telling you I was studying the debate a nigga about can a woman preach the word. What would you think about me if I told you that? See, see, so the air say something serious about me, see the wrong with me. What'd you say there? You said it wouldn't happen. That's what I said. I said it's something that made me creepy, so I don't like it. <laughs> no, I don't need that. No, I'm talking about this dude comes in, you ain't getting home the long enough to go. But do I even know? That didn't say, both of them say the same thing. That's not going to happen. <laughs> and I'm tripping off that guy. But Mike just said that. He said, I know that that's just not going to happen. <laughs> and then he thought I would be an idiot when I said that too. But never left. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, y'all. I'm sitting right now. We're going to get back to the world. 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 We're going to Stay there. 
stay well. But that's what that means they clean the dwelling in. That means they're not going to interfere how the problem or how you live, right? Do you think really somebody don't believe in God's word is really not going to have a problem with how you live? Let's just be practical and logical about the matter. If you say, look here, you're a woman now. You know it is man. He knows you are, he's no more. And this nigga brings slides and ribs and pork chops in the house and tell you to cook them. Is that going to please the world to? Come on, you got to put all the leaves in out your house. That means so I'm going to eat my bread. If this nigga please the world with you. If there's a tone, then you got to be set apart for fasting. And this nigga said, you got to bust it wide open like Sam If this nigga please the world with you. Because you're not going to bring your husband back up to the horse. But my daddy don't believe you think because he a sinner might absolve you for what you're going to do. What if this nigga say, look here, woman, I want you to put on some thongs and you know you ain't throwing dirt. What if he wants you to go bottom to apples and you know you ain't throwing dirt? What you gonna do? He come out here and ask you to blow a boot. What you gonna do? Why you messing with a nigga who wants to blow a boot? I don't know, I'm just saying. You got some freaking people out here now. Y'all know that, y'all used to be freaks too. I wouldn't know that to you. I'm saying, no, 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 no. Nah, he did that. That's what it was about that, you know. But Joel you know said, some of y'all used to do that freak, you know. None of y'all ain't got to raise your hand, you don't want to. I ain't gonna take it that far. That's a real, that's a real, real line. But real man, I ain't gonna have to rock up with somebody talking about, yeah, boy, you can blow my booty. Boy, are you ready to really admit that? Nigga told me, and I think it, that nigga told me I had to turn and stop. Bro, I'm starting to like it too much. I said, you know, it's this, what? Ha ha ha! Nigga sit there and tell me you started to like it too much, bro. Come on, bro. Check yourself. Don't you know you gotta be in a compromising position for that to be accomplished? That means that what you're a man and you're out here looking like a double post. That ain't cool, bro. But y'all gotta start looking at that. Y'all just want to get with people. You want to be with people. And if these people not walking in the world, especially for you women, you got to do what that man say. That man ain't gonna kill nothing by the day of the tone that you got to fast. That man wants some sex. The book says, Women, your husband is doing the devil, and you don't pay attention. You're doing the tone, but baby, I can't do that. That man will be like, Here, don't you go say you got to give me some? Why don't you gonna do it? That's why Paul said, I'm speaking, not the Lord. If somebody's gonna be pleased with the Lord, you don't mean they're gonna respect what you're doing. Just because they tell you that out their mouth, that's when you're gonna know when that's gonna happen. When the proven time comes. But I'll tell you like this here, what sense does it make for a saint to be married to a sinner? What sense does it make for a potential saint to seek out a sinner talking about I want to be with them? You know what that is? The hallmark of stupidity. You are a dummy. You are a simpleton. And if ain't nobody told you that before today, let me be the first. Stay on. That goes for you men too. I don't care how fat her booty is, how pretty she is, what her skin tone looks like, how big her titties is. You know what I'm talking about? All that stuff you're looking at, you get all you feel like your blood rising in your, in your middle region. That's why I'm there with that woman that you have to. And she ain't gonna spend all you doing, you're gonna be looking like a fool. Y'all don't think about stuff, man. Y'all just do stuff. That's how that shows you that you got the mind of a child. Because children don't think about stuff before they do it, they just don't do it. And I'll deal with the consequences later. But y'all be quick to run and tell people you're wrong. What do you have here? Verse 14. For the unbelieving husband is sanctified by the wife, and the unbelieving wife is sanctified by the husband, or else your children were unclean, but now they are confessed. But if the unbelieving depart, let him depart. A brother or sister is not under bondage in such cases, but God has called us unto peace. For what was thou, O wife, what thou shalt say to thy husband? Or no thou, O man, what thou shalt say to thy wife? You can't say nobody. They can only say it itself. But you know that girl before that? That was stupid retarded people trying to do to say, well, if she leave, you ain't under bodies in that cave, so you can go marry somebody else. And that's not what that man said. Y'all can keep that in mind now. Back to 7, 7, 14. I mean, we got that thing in Genesis 26, that's a whole nother matter. I thank the Lord. He gave me that a little earlier today. He gave me both of these. I read 2 Samuel 14 first. It's just dealing the simple fact of because this is what we had to deal with. Because now she's stuck. 
Kurang ucap, tak, susah tak? 